Okay, let's go live with James P. Kane, training sites uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I often get really kind of proud of myself if I put together a really great course, spend a whole bunch of time, energy, effort into it. Maybe I prepared and did all of the research to teach a lesson. Uh, you know, any kind of content that I put together, you know, most people are pretty proud of it, either the, because of the expertise that they're sharing with people or the fact that they really put something together that can help people. Um, what about if someone was taking that course in your learning management software or involved watching your lesson in a browser online and they could open up a little sidebar that had AI built into it that could answer any of the questions better than your course ever could. I'm talking about doing a summary of the actual lesson content, answering the quizzes that you had spent time putting together, doing the assignments that you had given. Um, this isn't something that is coming. This is something that's here today. And I want to go over what it is and why you really need to give yourself a real gut check on what you're going to do with the courses moving forward. Uh, what is it? Well, it's an AI browser, and there's a number of the large language model tools that are bringing out their own browser that has their AI baked directly into it. And we'll go over, I'll show you a couple examples of how this works, and then give you a little bit of an update on what's happening. Uh, and then we'll kind of think about how are we going to fix this or how are we going to deal with it. Uh, the first one that I came across was, uh, well, actually, let's do this instead. Um, Again, all of this information I'm talking about, it's in trainingsites.io forward slash join. There we are. All of the information, videos, tutorials, content, prompts, everything is in there. It's free to join. Love to have you in the community sharing all your experiences with AI and teaching uh, online. Um, but I want to show you kind of what happens now. And, and I do this. We all do this. If we're in the learning space or in the course space, we may do something along these lines where we use a plug-in or a learning management software. In my case, this one is called LearnDash. This is a demo site from LearnDash, just a spun up one to play around with. There's, uh, in WordPress, there's Lifter LMS, Tutor LMS, uh, LearnDash are kind of the big three, but they all work the same way. And the same as if a software is a service, you may have heard of services like Kajabi or Thinkific or School, uh, or Teachable, all of these work in a very similar fashion where you have a list of courses and in the course you may have a description of the course, materials, and a number of lessons and maybe a quiz. And that content usually does something like this. In the left-hand side panel, just so you can see, you'll have kind of the logical flow of the course and then you'll have maybe a video here Sometimes there'll be text, maybe comments for discussion, but it works pretty similar way and you can move through the lessons to complete the course. Uh, and these are all working directly within your traditional browser. Now, here's the problem. Uh, there was a tool, the one that I became aware of this one on, this one is from Perplexity and I'll open this one up as well. If you're not familiar with Perplexity, it's perplexity.ai. I would hope you are, but if you're not, I'll just tell you briefly how I look at it and then why something they brought out last month that I just got access to because I was on the wait list is a big change for course creators and people who teach online. So perplexity is the flip side of a Google search. What I mean by that is if you do a Google search right now, usually you'll put a question in to the Google search and it will give you a list of links where you might find the answer. And you got to go to those links and kind of figure stuff out, right? Perplexity works the other way. You can put a question in here, ask anything, and it what it does is it goes and does a search, analyzes all sorts of different options to answer the question, comes back with an answer for you, an AI-generated answer, but also has the references or the citations on how it came up with that particular answer. So this is a real time saver when you're doing searches and doing research and trying to figure out or get questions answered. What they did is they actually did something and said, you know what, what we're going to do is we're going to have our very own browser. And instead of making someone come and ask a question in perplexity, we're basically going to put perplexity 
in the actual browser and they have their own browser it's called comet now again this is one that's free for everyone uh, to get i think it's a free now for everyone i was on the wait list for a while but if you go and you're looking at perplexity.ai you'll see that get comet here my understanding is it that it's free i have a free account here again i can't guarantee that but the way that this works is instead of logging into chrome instead of logging into safari instead of logging into edge or firefox or whatever browser that you're using right now you're just going to open comet and it works exactly the same way all of the things that you're used to are there it's just another browser however however what happens now is if you look on the right hand side of some of these demos that are going through you now have a built-in AI tool or AI interface that you can interact with. And when you're interacting with this up and down, it knows exactly what's in the browser window because it is the browser. So anything that's going on in the browser window that you normally dealt with, there's an AI tool that is there that has access to that particular content. And I'll just show you a couple of examples of how this works. We'll go over some of the other ones that are available, and then we'll talk about, you know, what are some of the things that we can actually do to get around this or take advantage of it as well. So, uh, you know, they give some examples on the page here. And again, this is perplexity.ai forward slash comet. Uh, I have additional videos coming about how to actually use it for a live uh, summary. But on this one, you'll see they have a couple examples. Some of them are consumer ones. Like this is one about, you know, if you're going to look at a restaurant menu or you're buying something and you want to create an actual, uh, you know, purchase the goods for it, get a recipe, learn how to cook it. Uh, and this one just ties into perplexity and it opens up a side window as an example. Here's the ones that, you know, I think are important to us in the course space or the teaching space uh, is the one for browsing. And if you look, if you go to Reddit, you can basically summarize Reddit, for example, or any web page that you're browsing in, you can actually summarize it and interact just the same way as you would using ChatGPT, in this case is perplexity, ask questions, summarize this, do that, provide me that, any of the stuff you'd normally do, any of the prompts you normally do, they are now there and they are live for you in the browser. They have some examples for doing stuff like emails and search, but the one that I think is really scary slash a game changer for these courses is this one here called watch. Now watch what happens, watch. <laughs> watch what happens when I click watch. Now let's go back as an example to our video. In our video, we had many cases a YouTube video is part of a course, something that I do on a regular basis. And we now have a YouTube video and we have the AI browser that has access to that video. Summarize the current web page, videos, sources, steps. It goes through and does a summary of the entire video. So if you have created a course, traditional course, You've done a whole bunch of time putting together your video. Maybe you put it up on Vimeo as an example. Maybe you put it up on YouTube as unlisted. But you have some kind of course or lesson page that might be just a slide deck and you talking over it, might be a talking head. But anytime there's content there, that AI tool now has access to it. So this is, you know, a change in what's actually happening. And it's not just comet and perplexity uh, one of the ones that i looked at earlier is if you go look here now at genspark which is another one that is uh, a browser agent they now have their own browser so not only do they have the browser agent that does a whole bunch of stuff it's an agent that works within your browser they now have a downloadable browser so exactly the same as comment but GenSpark is built into it. And it's not just GenSpark. Uh, the other thing that just leaked yesterday that I was looking at, uh, and I'll open this one up so you can see it hopefully. Uh, this was August 14th, 2025. OpenAI's browser will use ChatGPT Agent to control the browser. If you've been playing around with the brand new GPT-5 and you use the agent mode, it opens up a browser window 
and it actually is a browser embedded in your browser. So it looks like what's happening from some of the code that's been seen, um, GPT-5 is going to be a browser. It's not somewhere where you log in to some, somewhere to answer a question. It is the browser. Uh, and they have here an example, use cloud browser or use the regular one. So this is one that just was announced, not announced, it was leaked uh, on the 14th or 15th. It's not out yet. If it does come out, I wouldn't uh, be surprised. I think all of the different players are going to have their own browser so that it becomes embedded everywhere. And it's think of Google. If you go take a look at Google right now, Google Gemini is in everything. It's in the browser. If you do a search, the first search results that come up now are AI generated search. If you're in the browser and you're using any of the Google Workspace tools, Gemini is there as an option. So Google's already done it, but most people don't recognize it because it's just Google. I think that's part of the reason I Google's in a really good spot is because they're kind of going in without people knowing that it is AI, that it is actually Gemini that's powering everything, including the browser. So there's ones like that where you got OpenAI, we got Gemini. I haven't seen anything from Claude yet. There's even standalone browsers. There's one called, I think, Dia, which I haven't uh, played around with, which is a browser that is just, um, is just AI. So this is coming. What are we going to do with it? Let's think about how this affects us if we're actually, uh, you know, playing around with our course now. We put that energy in. We put that effort in. We put all sorts of time in. Uh, let's take a look. And again, these are just from my notes, and I put them in with all of the other information in the trainingsites.io campus. But if I look at the way I'm teaching stuff now, and I'm thinking about putting my courses into a traditional LMS, um, you put it in. What happens for the student? Student posts in the forum if they have a question, they maybe go to a reply. Maybe they put a comment below. They wait for the instructor to come back or try and find out if any other classmates or people that have purchased a course actually have the answer for it. Um, now they've got an AI browser. They highlight the piece of text. They ask questions about the video. They say, explain this to me in a different way. They give an example and say, what about this case study? They look for an analogy. They say, hey, give me an instant answer. They do uh, a quiz. They do the assignment. All of that stuff is done. So getting answers, you don't have to use, uh, you, don't, you basically use a browser. You don't have to use any of the other things external to the browser. Uh, you know, summarizing the content is a big one. Uh, they showed that in the comment demo. You've got a video. The video is summarized in 30 seconds by the AI browser. Why would anyone watch the video just to get some content out of the video? Uh, if you want to do summarization of any of the content, it's done quickly. Summarize the key points of this. Give me uh, the action items from this lesson. Done. Instantly. Any kind of assignments that need to be done, right? If someone says, hey, you know, create a script for this or create your own slide deck for that or create the, you know, any kind of assignment that you give people in a traditional course, AI browser, all they have to do is a prompt and it's done. Um, and the real change here, the part that we have to be aware of is that in the past, the learning hub was the learning management system. Now the learning is not in a piece of software or a plugin or in a course. The browser is the actual learning hub, the learning platform. So this is going to be really, really interesting as it starts to come out. And I wouldn't be surprised in the next 30 to 60 days, all of the big players have their own browser and people are going to be fighting for browser space again. Whose browser are you going to install to actually go and put this up? So how do we get around this right now? Well, there's a couple things I think you know, I think we really have to do, and this is everyone that's in the course business or the teaching business, it's, you know, you have to ask yourself questions and be honest about it uh, and take a look at the course or courses that you've built. Uh, and the first question is, is this just information? Is it definitions or bullet points or a collection of facts in an organized fashion? Uh, can an AI browser deliver the same content faster and for free. 
Is someone going to pay for your course if they can get the content automatically directly right within the browser? So you're no longer competing against other course creators or lesson teachers. You're competing directly with AI in the browser. That's the first one. Second one is, you know, how are you going to test to see if someone understands something? Uh, doing a quiz, for example, where it was true, false, or yes, no questions. That has nothing to do with understanding anything anymore because someone can just ask the browser, what are the answers to the quizzes? And even assignments that you give, if it's something that can be done by AI, why bother giving it as some kind of test as to whether or not someone understands something or that they actually learn something. And most importantly, you have to ask yourself, what is my real value in this situation? Uh, if I, AI can provide all the information and even help with the assignments and answer the questions, why would someone pay me as a course creator or pay me as a teacher? What do we need to do forward, moving forward? Well, I think there's a couple things, and this is kind of the big one. Uh, I don't think it's the end of courses. I believe it's the rise of frameworks and transformations, not content. Uh, and it's not the what, it's more about the who and the how. And we have to make that transition from I'm a creator of content or a creator of information to a conductor or guide or mentor of people implementing and applying all of that information. So um, sharing personal experiences, being involved in a community to see how things work, to see what happens when these different AI answers and or tools or approaches are applied. Uh, and the course has to be an experience now, not a textbook. You can't sell textbooks, it's not gonna happen anymore. So here's kind of the homework for you when you're thinking about this. Anytime you're creating content, anytime you're trying to sell a course, anytime you're doing a lesson, just ask yourself, could AI, do this for my student or my course buyer. And if in fact they can, it doesn't necessarily need to be a course. You're going to have to figure out how can I make this an experience. And that's what we'll cover in the next couple videos at trainingsites.io. And if you haven't joined, trainingsites.io forward slash join. All of my information, all of my content, everything is there. It's an AI learning community where I want you to share your experiences, your prompts, your approaches to starting, building, and growing an education business online. My name is James. Like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be right back with another great video.